All too often, interactions between humans and wild animals result in negative outcomes for one or both groups. However, in a few rare instances, humans and wild animals have been known to cooperate for their mutual benefit. Such is the case in Laguna, Brazil, where, for over a century, human fishers and a population of bottlenose dolphins have worked together to hunt mullet. Welcome to Science Sessions. I'm Matthew Hardcastle. This uncommon partnership between humans and dolphins was the subject of a recent PNAS article by Mauricio Cantor of Oregon State University, Damien Farine of the Australian National University and University of Zurich, and Fabio Dara Giorgi of the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Brazil. The authors observed human dolphin interactions and conducted long term surveys to quantify the benefits received by both species. They also documented factors placing the future of this alliance at risk. Mauricio, how does a typical cooperative hunt play out? In our study area in Laguna, it takes place primarily in this canal that connects the lagoon system to the Atlantic Ocean. So normally, the migrating mullets will come in large schools and they can come close to the shore or through the middle of the canal. For this interaction to happen, we need active dolphins that are foraging in the area and compacting these schools and pushing towards the coast. And the humans will be standing on the terrestrial side by the edge of this deep canal. The peak of this interaction is given by the behavior cue of the dolphins that the fishers interpret that is the right time and place to cast their nets. These cues can take different forms, like a head slap or a tail slap by the dolphin, but it's usually this sudden deep dive in front of the fishers. And the fishers will react accordingly by casting their net. During the synchronous interactions, the dolphins will tend to dive for longer and wait about 15 seconds, which is more or less the time it takes for the net to hit the water and close over the fish, to then engage in this very active echolocation process, suggesting that they're going after the fish. This is what the dolphin's echolocation sounds like at the end of a hunt. What tools did you use to observe this cooperative behavior? We combined uh, a couple of tools to try and track the interaction simultaneously from underwater and above water. We used drones to record the dolphins. We used hydrophones. On the fisher side, we put GPS devices in them to understand the spatial behavior during this interaction. We used the sonar cameras to try and quantify the fish under the water. Damien, what are some of the benefits of cooperative fishing? The mullet migrate in very large numbers along the coast of Brazil. They create a temporary superabundance of food, or at least historically they would have. But the superabundance is quite difficult to access because they're in these big schools. For the dolphins, they can only fit three or four mullet in their stomach at once. You can imagine fishers seeing these huge schools of mullet being just maybe 30 meters off the coast and making it really inaccessible. For the fishers, if they catch 150, it doesn't really matter if the dolphins take two or three. So they can just pick those out of the net. There's very little conflict between the species. For this article, you also conducted population surveys of the dolphins in the area over 12 years and interviewed local fishers over 16 years. Fabio, what long-term trends did you document? The dolphin population seems stable. But it's a very small population. We are talking about just 50 to 60 dolphins. What we could see from our data first is that the frequency of this interaction with fishers are declining in the last few years. The mullets are also declining. Something that we could see with this long-term data is that the survival probability of dolphins is 13% higher when they are interacting with fishers. If dolphins are not there interacting, cooperating with fishers, they will be using other areas that overlap with these other fisheries activities that will increase the bycatch rate. If dolphins stop cooperating and that knowledge gets lost or the fishers stop as well, it's almost going to be impossible to bring back. This is not something that can just be reinstated. Ensuring continued benefits to both species will require 
focused conservation efforts for the dolphins and support for local fishers. Thanks for tuning in to Science Sessions. If you like this episode, please consider leaving a review and helping us spread the word.